We're rolling, we're recording, we got focus on my eyes. Hey, what's up guys, it's Kodak. Today we're talking about solar power and battery banks so that you can keep the lights on. Before we get into the video, I want to quickly help you calculate how much power consumption you need in an average day. I want you to just write down everything you wanna charge. For me, that's my computer, my cell phone, my drone, my speaker, and this camera here that we're recording on. Next to all the small stuff, we're just gonna take a rough estimate and say that they're gonna use five watts an hour. So my phone, five watts, 10, 15, and 20. My computer now, it's a power hog. For larger electronic devices like this, you can either check on the power supply. A lot of times it'll say, I know this one is a 95 watt hour charger, but it doesn't actually draw that much power when I use USB-C. That's USB-C PD, meaning power delivery. And in that case, it's drawing 60 watts every hour. So if I wanna power this computer for four hours, that's 60 watts times four hours, which gives us 240 watt hours that I need to charge, which coincidentally is about the size of this little guy here. I know this computer here, if I'm just doing like basic web browsing, watching movies, streaming, that kind of stuff, I'll probably get a full day's charge out of this. I could literally stream all day if I wanted to. Not that I would ever do something like that and marathon, no. But this guy, when I'm using it with power hungry programs like video editing, it's using 60 watts every single hour. This one here is the Yeti 500X. This is the Yeti 200X. And I also wanna compare these two to Jackery and share why I bought Goal Zero. Prior to COVID, I would do most of my work in coffee shops. But then with COVID and I went into quarantine in the Nevada desert for two months, I literally didn't leave and didn't shower for, it was about 50 days. So I needed some solar. And the only thing I could get at the time was this little 200X and a little 18 watt solar panel. That was barely enough. So I upgraded to the 500X. And this thing has been amazing. Like this will keep me running for probably about three days, especially between the two. And that's if I don't get any sun. And the fact that I don't have to like rely on coffee shops, I can just come out here and stay until my food and water runs out is pretty incredible. So I'm like, Maybe a little grateful for COVID for that. I do still miss working in coffee shops. I love the environment of it. But yeah, it's nice being out here and just kind of working away. Out here in the middle of pretty much nowhere. There's three main reasons I went with Goal Zero over the Jackery. One, and the easiest, is because I needed something right away. It can be difficult to deal with shipping when you live in a van, whereas I could just walk in REI and buy these things right then and there. And then I also get REI's like incredible warranty. The second reason is because the Goal Zero stuff, you can use the USB-C PD, which means I don't ever have to use the inverter on the battery banks. The inverter uses about six watts an hour just by itself, just to run the inverter. So if you turn this inverter on and left it run, it will drain this battery bank. So it's a lot less efficient because of that. The Jackery stuff doesn't have that option yet. So I would have to use the inverter on it, which means it would kill that battery a whole lot faster. And then the third reason is that these use a better charge controller. There's two different types. The MPPT, which is in the Goal Zero products, is about 20% more efficient, meaning that these batteries charge faster off the solar panels. So that's kind of huge for somebody like me that relies on this stuff to make a living. That being said, I think for a lot of you, you might be better off just going with the Jackery products, especially considering for about $200 more or so than this 500. You can double your power and get that Jackery Solar Saga 1000, whatever they call it. I'll link it in the description, but it's only like $200 more than this and it's literally double the power. Another downside of this one, at least for some, is that the inverter is only 300 peak watts on this guy, which means if you want to run, say, a coffee grinder or a blender 
or some more like power hungry electronics, you can't do it off of this. For me, that's fine. I'm okay just running my propane stove if I wanna boil water, although it would be great to have an electri electric kettle just for those quick morning coffees. That would be really nice because I, I love my coffee, but like it's not that much more of a pain just to run it off my stove. And these things are also like size wise pretty good. This is the smallest 500 watt battery bank that you can get. I know the Jackery's a little bit bigger and it has this stupid handle on the top that is just always there. So as far as stacking and it gets in the way with these guys, I can stack them right on top of each other in my van. So I can stack it that way. Or what I usually do is stack it this way. I can keep my cords stored right in the top of this guy. And on the 200X, it's got this little handle up there. So I just tuck my power cords right in there. And then for the other power cord, like this big one for my computer, I can just slip it right underneath there. So it just slides right under. And it's got these little feet here that drop right into the little divots on the top of this, which would also be great if you wanted to like stack two of these 500s. For a while, I was using two Goal Zero solar panels. I had the Nomad 28 and the Nomad 50. I had the Nomad 28 when I first went into quarantine with this guy. The Nomad 28 would fully charge this if I wasn't using it in one full day of sun. It just, it wasn't enough power for me. So then I picked up the 50 watt on top of it. I could chain the two together. So with the like 70, well like with like power loss, I was probably getting about 60 watts an hour with those two. So it certainly charged us a lot faster in like four or five hours of like full sun not using it. But it still wasn't enough. Like if I had cloud cover for a day, then I was screwed. I'd get one day of editing and then I was done for. I upgraded to the Boulder 100. It'll average probably about 80 watts an hour. I've seen it peak as much as like 90. I even saw it go to 100 one day, like charging this guy. It has this display here that tells you all that. It tells you all the ins, the outs. So the Boulder 100 will keep up with my power needs on a day. So if I have like full sun and I'm sitting there editing, it's gonna keep up with the computer and a little bit more. So it will still actually charge this. And let's face it, if I have to go to a day without power, like, I go a day without power. It's not a huge thing, right? I mean, come on now. Who wouldn't want to go for a walk or something? But then again, <laughs> on the days that I don't have power, it's because there's clouds. And a lot of times if there's clouds, there's wind and there's rain. And those are the days that I want to be in my van. But like I said, these will keep me going for like multiple days. One big downside to the Nomad solar panels in particular is that they don't have stands. So it's a huge pain in the butt. And one of the things I hated most about them was that I would have to like find stuff out here to prop them on. Whereas with the Boulder solar panels, they have kickstands built in and they're pretty heavy. So I don't have to worry about the wind blowing them around, which happened a bunch with my like Nomad panels. I would end up having to like put carabiners on them and stake them into the ground or hang my shoes or something off them just to make sure they didn't blow away if I wanted to leave them out and go for a walk. Not having a kickstand built into it like really frustrated me more than I would have thought. So upgrading to the Nomad panel, like yeah, it's a little heavier. It's a lot heavier actually, and it's bulkier. It takes up a bunch more space in the van. But for somebody like me that's traveling a little bit slower and spending more time in places, I don't know, I have more than enough room in the van. And generally I'm not sleeping in cities and stuff here. So I can actually set my stuff outside and not have to worry about sleeping inside the van with everything in it. Even then I can still do that. I've done it. I'll just put the Boulder 100 in the front seat and some stuff on the floor in the front and I can definitely still get by. So that's why I went with Goal Zero stuff over the Jackery. Um, you'll have to make that decision yourself. The Jackery is definitely a lot cheaper, but it does come at a slight, slight, slight loss in quality in the sense that it won't charge quite as quickly as these guys do. And then you lose that USB-C capability. So if you have a computer that'll charge off USB-C PD, you can't use that or take advantage of that on the Jackery products, whereas you can on the Goal Zero. What else can we talk about here? Dun, 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 dun. I don't know. Maybe we should go into like talking about power or something like that. Oh yeah, we are talking about power. Oh boy, I totally forgot. Um, hmm. 
Man, do I really have to Google this right now? Okay, I'll Google it. Google, tell me the name of that company.